Dahlia, welcome to the DanceX Festival. Welcome to the Australian Ballet. Thank it is you so much for having me. <laughs> such a pleasure to have you. I think what you've brought in Guder Guder is so powerful. And I know the audiences sitting in the house um, who haven't seen it, um, just watch it with such a captivating uh, energy. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about the birth of it and how it started. Well, uh, Good Ed, Good Ed is my first solo piece, um, working with the company for its whole life, so mm. about 27 years now. And it took two other major productions, uh, or three actually, before I was even convinced that I could pull off a solo <laughs> um, uh, from much, uh, not pressure, but good pressure from uh, co-artistic director Rachel Swain believing in me. Um, and. Uh, I, at that moment in um, thinking about what I might like to say, um, not just like my sharing my life but my community's life and I wanted to look at the concerns that I had within my community so I sort of blurted out all this stuff I wanted to tackle and, um, and I needed to have a chat with my pop Patrick Dodson who's patron of the company but also my grandfather. Um, and uh, cultural dramaturg on many of our pieces that we've made since relocating to Broome, my hometown. And he said to me, look, there's lots you want to say, but you need to start with this little bird called Gured Gured, or Guai. And um, this little bird in our uh, country is, uh, walks along the shorebird, and when the tide turns, it calls to tell you that it's about to turn, so you need to get to higher ground. Oh, yeah. And he kind of um, related that bird's function in culture and in, in our understanding to, to the kind of works, work that we do in Marageku, looking for uh, finding ways interculturally to um, tell stories together, to um, tackle some of those major issues here in Australia. Um, but also my work teaching language at a primary school in, in Broome and, and um, the fact that, you know, our loss of language and loss of uh, cultural practices due to colonisation has, has been devastating in the Kimberley. Um, but we're still strong and resilient, we're still there, so, mm. you know, all of that. So starting with the little bird was, was pretty much the starting point to Good Ed, Good Ed. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And what do you mean, can you elaborate a bit on what you mean by intercultural? Yeah, so we... Um, you know, our foundations we draw from indigenous knowledge systems and, and, and ways of working and knowing and being, but we're an intercultural company, so we work um, often uh, with people from all different stories and, and cultures, and, and our processes draw from those stories. So it's not just a body that's going to um, uh, execute the dance that we're wanting to show there, we have to find that dance mm. and the language of that dance with each of those artists that we have the privilege to work with and valuing their story and their their cultural background and everything that in, um, influences their movement style and, and their, um, whether it's hip hop, buto, you know, mm. Malay martial arts <laughs> yeah. um, uh, or classical ballet, you know, yeah. like everything has to come from them and then we explore how to draw out those, um, the, the kind of grammar that you need to be able, and the language that you need to, to undergo the um, interrogation of a particular concept. So, mm. And that must make for amazing, authentic sort of individuality of each artist that you work with. Yeah, I mean they have ownership then of, of the movements that have, have been developed and, and there's a point in the process that those things are shared and and, um, and that's where it really starts to get interesting because mm. you see someone's movement in someone else's body and, and vice versa mm. and, and and tasks, you know, we, we use a task-based approach so, you know, sh someone showing us smoke, what smoke means to them and, and developing those, um, the, uh, you know, the, the movement that we're looking for mm. um, into scenes or... Um, yeah. Uh, is just so rewarding in, and, and, and everyone feels valued and everyone has, has um, 
something at stake when they're performing it because it's theirs, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 So speaking of movement, um, describe to me how you found the movement of Guder Guder. Well, I look straight first and foremost to my cultural influences and um, movement languages and everything from walking the reef and what that's done to my body over the 45 years that <laughs> I've walked a reef. Mm. Um, well, maybe not. I didn't walk at birth, did I? <laughs> um, but uh, also the Malay martial arts, so from my Malay heritage, um, mm. I've had the privilege to learn very basic um, silat, uh, which is a Malay martial art form um, that has been uh, gifted to me from um, one of my datu, like a, like a grandfather, um, Ahmad bin Fadal, um, but also my uh, another Datu, uh, Manu Benoma, also teaching me from quite young. Um, so those movements, like I'm often, like in processing my identity, because it's quite a mixed heritage, mm. um, thinking where does that squat come from? Or where does, mm. why am I able to do that? Why, why are my Achilles, <laughs> you know, stretched like that? Or when I fish, I s squat in that position, is that the Asian side of me? Is that the indigenous side of me? Yeah, where, wow. where does that come from? So I'm often thinking that um, when I'm exploring, but not specific, like I'm not saying, okay, now I'm going to be this or now I'm going to be that. I just let it all, this is me and yeah. this is what comes out when I think of certain, you know, if the task is break with the past, how does that come out? And it's all kind of melted together yeah. in a way. So. It's interesting in the solo, you do a squat and your feet are on like a full like demi point as we would say in classical ballet. <laughs> and I was amazed at how like stable you were, like what you yeah. just said about the squatting, like stable you were on your demi point, <laughs> but like all the way down on the ground. So I can, you know, although I don't know the influences like you've described, um, the, the effect, the movement style, it's so compelling to watch and the articulation of the feet and, and everything. It's, um, it translates beautifully from someone that doesn't necessarily know your background um, intimately. Yeah, and I, I kind of incorporate the, you know, the years of watching animal movement and, you know, so drawing from, from, from that and, you know, goanna and, you know, the way that the muscles work on their bodies when they're doing just simple things like reaching out or, um, as well as obviously my um, traditional influences of dance, um, very subtle in, in my area of the Kimberley. Um, mm. Yaru dance is quite subtle um, in movement and that kind of matched nicely with the Malay martial arts mm. and, the, and then not to mention the aerial work and, and working with the net and um, just exploring the potentials of um, both being trapped but free with, mm. with the net and movement. Mm. Okay. And so is that the reference of the net? Like, let's talk about, because the net is a focal figure mm. in the, throughout the solo. Um, w you know, how did it come about? What is your relationship to it? Yeah, it's kind of like my silent partner on the, mm -hmm. on, on the stage. Good um, partner. Yeah, and along <laughs> with the video um, projection work, it's kind of like a trio. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, the net have this relationship with it. It's a bit... It, it reminds me of my, my youth. It, it you know, brings me back to those fishing stories of, of going yeah. out, learning on country with my father or mm. being um, schooled by, by country or, or the tide turning. Um, uh, so it's, it, it's, a, it's a point that I can connect with my past, mm. but it also um, is one that can entrap me um, and explore those uh, devastating issues like youth suicide and, and um, you know, youth struggling with their identity and, and, you know, the constant not being able to find a place to call home kind mm -hmm. of feeling in their body. Um, so these are all things that I worked with to, with Korn Augustine and I should mention the amazing um, director and choreographer, uh, uh, Belgian uh, Korn Augustine, who I worked with to make this piece. Mm -hmm. um, so we found that the net um, was a reference to those early years of, of things that made me solid and grounded mm -hmm. and, and um, very comfortable in knowing who I am, but also 
the point where I can explore for young people these days that disconnect and that um, ability to be free and risk taking and um, uh, but also entrapped with their thoughts and, and their positions in this in the society that they're living in you know yeah so then there's the text there's text on the screen yeah. there's spoken text why you know dance is typically a silent art form yeah. what was the inspiration or why did you feel compelled to add sort of spoken yeah. word into it because some of it is is very arresting yeah. and very um, you know I've lived in Australia only two years so hearing the facts that you say over yeah. the microphone um, uh, is is you know confronting yeah. why bring text into the solo it's an interesting, uh, I think with dance theatre you get, you know, all mediums you can kind of feed off and, and that task-based work that we undergo, um, sometimes a task results in a, in a, a chunk of text. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, one of the tasks that Kun gave me was to tell a story in two different languages and he wanted to see how the language of that story changed my body and the movement that came from it and um, hence the the use of Aboriginal English and, and how, you know, it lights up. It, um, it's so much more expressive than yeah. if I was to say it in standard Australian English. Mm -hmm. um, but then the frustrations, like giving me the task to explore what frustration is in not just movement, but in what things come out of your mouth. Or, mm. um, but then reciting that, you know, thinking about uh, the past and where we're at now and, and the time is now, which is what you're referencing. I think um, those facts that, are, that are, are gone and we know those things or, you know, we should know those things, but the current situations, um, I think the text is a, is a great point to then connect with the movements that you see both before and after and reflect and go, that's where that comes from, that those frustrations come from that you know, you're kind of almost getting a little um, moment inside the person's head, you know? Mm, yeah. Because <laughs> um, it's kind of talking to myself. All the text is kind of just... Yeah, internalised. Yeah, coming to terms with all these um, frustrations or mm. these histories or these current issues. Um, but I'm able to do it in a way that uh, the audience can feel they're witnessing that. Yeah, you know? and yeah. We, we certainly do witness it. Well, it has stood the test of time. You're now in your first decade, right? Yep. Of performing Almost. work. Almost, <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. It's, um, it's nothing you haven't heard before, but it's such an unbelievable solo, such a powerful message. But you are such a compelling performer. Um, I want to see years and years of you on stage. If I'll you give do my me your best. Work. <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> Great chatting with you, Dahlia. And welcome again to the Australian Ballet and Thanks Dance so Arts. much for having Marigeku and, and Good Ed, Good Ed um, sharing the stage with such amazing artists. And yeah, thank you so much. Such a pleasure. Thank you.